I want to talk about three things today. I'm going to talk about the system of education which we are in. I'm going to talk about classroom rules a little bit, and I'm going to talk about how to teach kids to be better questioners. And this is not a one-way conversation. If you're on Twitter, on social media, please start tweeting. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these ideas, and obviously catch up with you later since I only have 180 seconds. You should know who stands before you, so Homa, thank you so much for the kind words. But me, in five seconds, all I really want you to know is when I was a little boy, I wanted to be Superman. That's me. Uh, and my mission in life, since literally since I was like two or three, I knew that I wanted to do one simple thing, and that was just change the world. Really easy to do, something that educators aspire to do every day, right? So it's not easy to change the world, right? Educators have this this you know, monumental task, it's a good deed, and all of a sudden we get to this problem. But I will tell you, it's something that we definitely can do. Problem is we have to stop thinking about fixing education because fixing almost implies a state of brokenness which implies it was once working. So what time, you know, it's, it's easy, right, to check off the list of things that we did wrong and how we can get it better. And I say, what time do you want to go back to when it was working perfectly? Um, <laughs> That, that's a problem. So technology evolves, and so should education. Education is a changing animal. We live and we teach in an absolutely amazing time. Um, all your personal consumer technology gadgets always make you wonder and say, wow, this is incredible. But, and it happens to be a very big but, um, the problem is, is that there is a lot of obstacles in our way. This probably looks familiar to you all, your nice shiny desks, right? But the, the problem is really the way we perceive school or class. This is, for most of us, this is education. We see education as preparing students for what's next. The big buzzwords these days is, you know, college and career ready, right? So college, uh, career, <laughs> ready? So <laughs> it's, it's this concept, it's, it's the McDonaldization of education where we're fitting a one-size-fits-all solution. You know, do you want ketchup? Do you want mayonnaise? Too bad, you're getting what's coming out of the tray. Um, in the industrial model, we used to teach, you know, we complain, we always say, well, it's like the industrial model. Well, yeah, fine, but in the industrial model, at least we were teaching kids how to make stuff. Now we just stuff them full of things that we're told we have to teach them and push them down the line. So we need to start focusing more back on the student. It is not about education and businesses. It's about students, and that's why we're in this game, so to speak. And it's about IEPs. Uh, IEPs, obviously, the uh, individual education plan. I think every single learner should have one of these. Why wouldn't you want to make a chart of what you're going to learn, how you're going to improve, and then measure if you've gotten there and how you're going to get uh, further in your career? That's what it's about. My son has an IEP, and he started school this year. This is Hunter. It's his first day of school. I mean, who wouldn't want that kid in their class, right? So um, th this is Hunter getting off the bus the first day of school. Um, school was not what he thought it was going to be. Because when I met his teacher, the first thing she said is, hi, my name is Mrs. So-and-so, and we have rules in my classroom, simple rules. I'm like, oh, I'm going to like her already. So rules, students will be quiet. Now, I didn't tell you he has an IP because he has a praxis of speech. We're trying to get the kid to talk. The first rule of being quiet in class is probably not going to be beneficial to him. Feet will be on the floor. He's three and a half. I don't know if his feet reach the floor. And, and this is what I'm thinking. Oh, boy. You know, as I said, he's a little boy. What, this is crazy. But we fill schools with this all the time. We give kids, kids the boundaries of don'ts. The first day, do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. We don't tell them what we'd like them to do. We tell them what they can't do and what they shouldn't do. This is a punishment book, and notice, I, I think it's amusing, from 1932, the nature of the infraction, written up like a police report, was passing notes impromptu, uh, pa writing and passing impromptu notes in class. This sounds a lot like texting today. The problems haven't changed, the medium has changed. We have to start learning how to break the rules. I'm gonna do one right now. Ta-da! Okay, so. <laughs> One idea, one big idea I think we could start taking is teaching kids the difference of eating versus cooking. That's the difference of following directions and figuring things out on your own. We tell kids all the time, this is the answer, this is what you're looking at, go for that. But it's really about this. Come up with a question and then that's how you learn. That's how we figure things out. I learn from my kids all the time. Now I used to be a classroom teacher, now I'm just a father, which is kind of the same thing just without the classroom. So I can do it the way I want to. But um, my son was trying to spell out his name. I was busy with my other son, who's one. We were changing the diaper, to be honest with you. And uh, my son was like, Daddy, Daddy, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the letter is. Blah, blah, blah. And you know what? After a few minutes, he figured it out for himself. You figure out and you fix these things and you come up with your own answers to education because it's not about students will be able to. You know what I want students to be able to do? I want them to be able to question. I want them to be able to think and I want them to be able to act. And it's in that order. That's what drives education. Your students can and will change the world, and that is in fact how you as educators and how we will change the world. It's through our students and what we allow them to do. We have to stop thinking that they can't and help them prove that they can, because these kids really can, given the chance, change the world. Now this talk really wasn't about the things I said before, it's really about this, learning to question the rules of our system and change them. 
The bottom line in all this is that we can complain as much as we want about education. We know there are problems. That's fine. But we have to act louder. And more importantly, you are the one variable that you can control. We can only control ourselves in all this, our passion, our dedication, and th this can be absolutely infectious to kids. We can actually turn this around. We just need to know that that is the one person that it's going to come from. So I hate to do this to you, especially on a Saturday, but I'm giving you a homework assignment, and it's simply that. Be infectious. Thank you so much, guys.